Hey everyone, today we're going to do a um, part on the part four on our tractor points. Uh, sorry, I've done this uh, exact intro around four times just because uh, my computer kept crashing. So uh, hopefully this time this will be the final copy and uh, it'll actually record properly and actually, you know, show the film. And Because every time I did it, it wouldn't show the process of me actually, you know, typing in you know, polygon or something. So, um... So yeah, uh, attractor points is, uh, I think, one of the most unique ones. It's a very, very, I think it's a good starting place on how to actually start to uh, manipulate the manipulate a specific geometry in order to uh, display um, kind of the point that you want. So, for example, uh, attractor points can see, like, the closer it is to the point, the, I guess, let's say, for example, a scalar change. Uh, the smaller the scale, the closer the point it is, the smaller the scale is. The farther away from the point is, the, the larger the scale is, or the larger it is to the base scale. And if that doesn't make sense, um, I will explain it throughout this entire film. So let's get started. So um, to start this, I'm going to do a. Um, I'm going to start with a grid of points, and actually. Uh, create the polygon based off those point off the points. So let's do that square. So I'm going to start with a square. Uh, this command uh, it says 2D grid with square cells. So this is the one you want to use. And uh, I'm just going to set the parameters to 15. I'm going to set the extent x and the extent y to 15. So this should be a good number. And what square does is um, by creating this, it creates this grid. So it outputs cells and points. So cells is basically each one of these kind of lines or each one of these little cells. And point is the resultant of these uh, intersections that happen. Um, so if we type in point, it can actually, it'll actually start to show us that type of, uh, the X's represent each one of those uh, intersections that happen. So in order to do that, we're going to create a polygon on uh, each one of the centers. So if we just type in polygon, it'll be like, okay, so we create this polygon, but it's only creating it at the center. So the only, the only way to change that, or the only way to put it on there, or the way that we're going to do it is we're going to plug the plane into this point. And as you can see, it made a polygon on each one of those points. It's a little messy, but uh, we're going to fix that by putting, uh, we're going to change the radius to 0 0.5, plug the radius in there. And now we have a um, somewhat good polygon that we can really understand. And I'm not going to do a hex hexagon. I'm going to do a square. So I'm just going to put the segments for four. The segments is basically the number of sides. So we're just going to plug that in. So in order to do that, once we have this, we're going to now do... Um, I'm going to rotate this. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to rotate it. Uh, rotate this uh, geometry these individual geometries because it's annoying and I'd rather have it orthogonal instead of rotate 45. So I'm going to do rotate, not that rotate. I'm going to do rotate. Uh, this is the rotate, the one that rotate plane. Uh, so it's asking for a geometry, an angle, and a plane. So I'm putting on the geometry, asking for an angle. Uh, an angle is something that is defined in ra uh, radians, so we want to define it in degrees. So good thing Grasshopper comes with a uh, radians to degree converter. So we can just plug this in. And this is a plane. All we need to do for the plane is basically saying where do we want to rotate it or what's we're going to rotate around and we're going to rotate around the center. So we're going to plug it into this point and we're actually going to, uh, we can actually rename these uh, individual components. So I'm going to do is right click, go to this top part and name it uh, center of polygon. So that will help out. And now we're going to change it to 45. And we're just going to click this and uh, turn it off. No big deal. So now we have that rotated geometry, as you can see. So then what we're going to do is create, um, do a scalar change based off of attractor points. Uh, basically off of three attractor points. I just kind of made up a number from right there. So um, the way to scale in Grasshopper is to just type scale. And we'll get this one right here. I'll plug the geometry into there. Once the geometry is plugged into there, you can see it just scales it based off of the center, which is, uh, if you define it, 0, 0, 0, 
that's not really helping us, really, mm, not helping us at all. So you can see it's scaling it downwards based off that point. So we want to scale it based off of each one of those points. So it's a center, so I'm thinking, why does we plug it into the center of this polygon? Oh, it's, it works. So as you can see, it actually uh, scales based off that center point. And we're actually going to turn this off for the sake of it. So actually, let's keep this on for right now. Um, so you can see it scales it, but it doesn't scale it the way we want to. We, don't, we want it to scale um, saying that around this area it's about 0.4, 40% uh, scale, while this one is uh, full scale, while this one is 20%, and this one's 10%. So let's do that. So let's actually start to uh, do that. The way, the, way to do, the way to start doing this is to do a um, remap, uh, start with a remap numbers. So this is a new one. Um, so we're, our factor, we're going to put a remap numbers. This will basically remap the numbers into a new numeric domain. So what we're going to do is just plug this in here. And now we have that. Um, so now it has a value, source, and a target. Uh, so the target is basically a domain because this is target domain. So let's just create a domain. Construct domain. I'm gonna plug this in here. We're gonna do um, a closest point. This is a new one as well. Uh, the closest point basically is. Remember, we said we're gonna base them off of points. So this will basically give that reference from Rhino to Grasshopper about what points we want to use to reference it to. So, and so let's start with that. Let's uh, create three points. One. I'm just gonna put randomly two, three. So now I have three points. I want to highlight them all. Go back into Grasshopper. Type in point. And now we have our point, as you can see. So this is the point we have right now. So all we need to do is, um, in order to set the point on from, or reference the point from Rhino to Grasshopper, we just need to right click and select one point. Or select, sorry, select multiple points because it's more than one point. So select multiple points and click. And as you can see, it references those three points. The way to prove it's happening is you click this area or highlight it, and as you can see each one of those are lit up green. So that means good to go. So we can plug in the cloud, and then the point is basically saying, um, the cloud is saying what points are we going to use to reference them to, uh, what points are we going to use to reference, and it's going to be those, and basically what points are we going to um, manipulate the geometry based off of. And we're going to manipulate it based off the center of the polygon. Now this center of the polygon is very important. It's definitely going to be a uh, key component. So I'm going to group it real quick by itself, just so you guys understand how important this is. Uh, so we can now kind of link the way to link these two together is we need to um, figure out a way to so source domain and value to remap. So we need to actually create something that will link these two, and something that will link these together will be bounds. Now this is a number bounds. It creates a numeric domain which encompasses a list of numbers. It basically encompasses the distance of the numbers and these values, or and the source in order to um, for the script to understand how we're going to manipulate the geometry. So we're going to plug in distance in here, and we're going to plug in domain here, and then we're going to plug in the distance into the value, and that will create our geometry. And as you see, it's lit up red, and we're like, okay, what's going on? And it says cannot scale with factor zero. And you can. Right now it is scaling factor zero, but it's just going to freak out and tell you that. Um, so right now, domain start zero and domain end is one. So we're going to set it to 0 0.1. Once we set it to 0 0.1, we're just going to plug it into here. And as you can see, um, turn this off. It's going to have the uh, manipulate geometry based off those three points. So we can actually start to move around these points in order to uh, manipulate the geometry and how we want it to uh, scaled. So we can actually just do this and uh, this. You can see it starts to create this kind of shape based off the carving of these points in a sense if you want to think about it that way. So you can see the smaller the point is, uh, the closer to the point the smaller it is. As you can see. Um, so once we want to change that to the, the closer it is to the point the larger it is. The way to do that is we basically just have to reverse these and do domain start and domain end. The domain start will just be one right now. So we're going to flip it basically. Instead of 0.1 to 1, we're going to do 1 to 
as you can see, it just reversed it. And that's a way to kind of reverse it. So now that we did a scalar change, we want to do more of a rotational change now. So the way to do a rotational change is the same kind of concept as a um, the scalar change. So we're just going to do a rotate. And we're going to plug in the geometry. And we're going to plug in that plane, which is that center, wherever it is, there. And now it's asking for an angle. And remember, with angles, we have to change them to uh, degrees. Because right now it's reading radians. So we're going to move this stuff a little bit out more. Oh, that's not good. So we have the radians. And then now we're going to do basically essentially the same thing. So remap numbers. And we're going to do clipped. And we're going to do a, um, once we have the clip, target. We know that's a construct domain. We're going to plug this in here, and we're going to do now, once we do that, we can do our bounds, and we can do our closest point. And I'm only going to rotate it based off of one point just for right now. Uh, no big deal, and I know it goes here. Sorry I did that so quickly, but um, it's basically the same thing. You plug in the source into bounds into distance, and then the distance into value as well. And now we're going to set our point at the center, because we need to do that. All right, once we did that, we're now going to set our point. So we're going to set another point. So I'm going to say right there. Let's say set one point, and now the script works. But right now, it's not really reading correctly. It is reading correctly, but it's not really showing a change. So right now, it's from 0 to 1. So it's basically saying move from 0 degrees to 1 degree. That's pretty boring. That doesn't really show us anything. So let's do that real quick. Let's change it from 0 to 45. That'll show a pretty significant change, I'd, I'd say. So um, let's turn off that scaled one. Um, OK, so now we see the change. And as you can see, it's starting to do this rotational change, which is a uh, very, very uh, cool, in my opinion. So uh, we can actually start to move the point around. And it actually, it's the closer it is to the point, the less rotation is going to have. And we can change that to the other way around, like we did before. And put zero in here. And actually show it rotate as we move the points across, which is cool. So once we do that, we're going to now change, um, instead of a rotational change now, let's do the last part. So we did a scalar. We did a rotational. Let's do an extrusion just to finish it all off. So we can do extrude, and it's asking for base and direction. So we know our direction is Z, so we're going to plug in the Z, and we're going to plug in our base. Right now it's just processing the geometry, and now we have this. Let me do perspective view. Now we can see it is extruding, but it's kind of a boring extrusion. It's just extruding by one unit. Uh, I don't know what the unit is in here, so I'm just going to call it a unit, so one unit. It could be inches or feet, it doesn't matter, it's just moving one. And that's not what we want. We want it, we want it to be more um, like a wave in a sense. So let's move this here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a um, bit of a different thing. We're going to do, we're going to do, it's not different, but it's going to be, this, this part's going to be, I think, the finale of it. So we're going to do a remap. And clipped. We're going to do a construct domain. Again. Target. We're going to do a bound. And then we're going to do a closest assist point. So once we do that, um, we're going to have that. And instead of doing just setting one point like normal, we're actually going to do, uh, we're actually going to use the curve, we're actually going to draw a curve in Rhino and use that as our reference curve in order to find, in order to get points from. So, in order to do that, we're going to do, um, on Rhino, we're going to do enter curve, and just start drawing on it. Just draw within the parameter of the square. 
So, boom, 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 boom. So we're gonna use this. And to reference this curve, we're just gonna do curve in Grasshopper. Right click, set one curve, click this. And now we're just gonna uh, not plug this in yet. We're gonna actually do a divide curve. In order to divide it, we're gonna do that. And we're going to set the count to 12. Now, this is basically saying, oh, let's do 20 then. All right, well, whatever then. We're basically saying, in here, in this script, we are saying the divide curve, since it's new, I'm going to explain it. Uh, we want to divide this curve into 20 even parts, or into 20 counts. That's what it's saying. So now it outputs points, tangents, and parameters. So as you can see, this is familiar. We want points. So we plug in our points into the cloud. And we plug this point into the center. And it'll actually start to scale that uh, based off of that um, point, based off those points. So let's go back here, and it says it can't extrude. Uh, can, curve cannot be extruded. And we're like, what? It seems to be working, right? Um, the problem is we set the one of the domains to be 0. So let's change that to 0 0.1. And it will. the script will be happy because it's just making a thickness on where it's zero. So you can see it adds a little bit of thickness. Yep, there we go. And see the script's happy now. It's not like, what's going on? So now you see it is an extrusion, but it's not really, it's not really an extrusion because it's just the surfaces on all four sides. We want the, the top and the bottom. So in order to fix this, we're just gonna do uh, a cap. So we're gonna do cap holes, type that in and cap it. All right, and now it's capping, it's just loading. And there we go, we have the geometry uh, loaded in Grasshopper. So it looks pretty cool. Um, definitely, I think really cool. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to now bake this geometry from Grasshopper to Rhino, uh, bake. And we're gonna put on, oh, shade is already on, so good. Um, we're gonna move this out of the way. We're going to move it here. Come on, move it over there. All right, cool. As you can see, it's the geometry that's been rotated. So now we've kind of manipulated this geometry and actually started to play around with, or these geometries, sorry, in order to manipulate how they kind of interact with those points. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, it's a, I think it's a fairly simple script. Uh, so yeah, I am... Um, definitely going to go I'm not too sure what the next part's going to be it's definitely going to be something um, I think a little bit harder it, I think we're going to start basing stuff off of a precedent uh, I may be missing something in my lesson lessons but uh, I think we may go on to actually building something based off of a precedent and based off those precedents you're definitely going to learn something from it and it's going to be a lot uh, it's going to it's going to be hard but it's definitely something you're going to learn from and actually become a better modeler because of it because the more you model, you know, obviously the better you get. So yeah, guys, uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.